It's been a while since I've done a Bible review, and I'm rather excited to uh, take a look at two new journaling Bibles in the NRSV translation, both of which have uh, been recently published by Zondervan. And uh, just as by way of uh, you know disclosure, both of these Bibles were provided to me free of charge and also free of any obligation to say something positive or you know anything like that. So I'll take a look at these uh, journaling Bibles from Zondervan and uh, let you know what I think. The first one that I wanna cover is uh, what Zondervan is calling the Journal of the Word Bible. And this one includes the Apocrypha. Uh, it comes in this attractive box. It's a bit of a clamshell. Has all the information on the back. Uh, it, this one is in a uh, imitation leather or leather soft, I think is what they call it. Um, it looks like canvas, but it's not. It's still just the uh, leather soft material. It uh, feels um, kind of rubbery as leather soft or imitation leather tends to, but it has a texture to it. Um, looks nice. It has the stitching around the edges. Whether or not that actually uh, holds the Bible cover together better uh, would have to be seen after a couple years of use. Nice logo stamped up on the top. Nice cross, I should say. Repeated on the spine. NRSV, Journaling the Word Bible. Now Zondervan is making this available in uh, a couple of different color covers and also with or without the Apocrypha. They were kind enough to send a copy with Apocrypha to me, uh, knowing that that is my preference. I do rather like the uh, that NRSV logo, a little more modern. Pages are not art gilt. It does come with two ribbons. Uh, it's a, about eight inches tall and about six inches wide. I haven't bothered to actually physically measure it yet, but uh, other journaling Bibles, and I'll have one that I'll look at uh, from 2009, were in that same dimension. And uh, it seems like the journaling Bible, I don't, don't know if I want to call it a craze, but the, the phenomenon has really been in this size range, about eight by six. Rounded corners, very uh, kind of a creamy color paper. Let's take a look at the other one real quick. The other new journaling Bible that Zondervan has released in the NRSV translation is this Artisan Collection Bible. Um, it's the same text block as the uh, Journaling the Word Bible. Um, this one happens to not have the Apocrypha in it. Again, it's about eight by six in size. It is a hard cover. Uh, unlike the Journaling the Word Bible, it did not come in a uh, box nor in a sleeve. It has instead uh, this uh, little wrap on it. I'll just take that off real quick. So not as much information about the uh, book itself. Neat little blurb about the artist. Uh, they are kind of pushing uh, the art that she created for this cover. It comes in blue and um, pink, so I'm guessing they're thinking boys and girls. To be perfectly honest, I've seen the pink one also, and I actually like that color. Um, I don't want to go all gender about this. I think that either color looks really good for uh, whichever a person wants. Um, now, interestingly, unlike the Journaling the Word Bible, this one has art gilt page edges. And it's not just gilt, it is actually art gilt. So they have a blue under gold. The corners are not rounded, they're square like typical hardcover would be. Two ribbon markers again. Uh, blue and gold, they, they go well with the uh, color scheme that's of this Bible. So 
simple stamped logo. I personally rather enjoy the touch of gold in the cover and the appearance. It looks nice. Uh, reminds me of uh, perhaps marble um, or uh, the Japanese bowl art form where you, you would take a broken bowl and you would mend it rather than throwing away but in the cracks you fill it with uh, gold to make the cracks obvious. It is a ancient art form that's very beautiful. This sort of reminds me of that. Both the Journaling the Word Bible and this one, the Artisan Collection, uh, has a page here at the very front when you open it with a uh, a space for you to put your name. It's not a presentation page, just kind of a, you know, this is mine. Journal Word. All right, so let's take a look at the insides. So here we have a uh, example of the Journaling the Word Bible open to the center. Um, both Bibles use essentially the same text block, so uh, I'm only going to bother looking at one inside at the moment. It is, uh, as Zondervan likes to call it, this is a, a lay flat or a lie flat uh, Bible. It will open up uh, and do just that. It's It's got some weight to it, so its own weight does hold it down if I'm right here at the center. Um, as you can see here, um, there's a sewn binding. It's uh, not glued, so it should be durable and hold up well for years of use when someone's going to be writing in this Bible. Uses the comfort print that uh, Zondervan created. Um, now, as I understand it, for each translation that Zondervan is publishing, using the comfort print, uh, they've made it unique for each uh, translation. So the NRSV has its own comfort print font. Uh, footnotes or translator's notes at the bottom of the page. Headings are uh, bolder, slightly larger than the text. Um, in this video, it appears that ghosting, you know, so see through from one page to the next, uh, the ghosting seems uh, prominent. However, you know, absent the camera, just my bare eye with it, it doesn't show up that much. It looks like it might be line matched, for example, right here, the word life, that whole line seems to line up with the line behind it. But all I have to do is move up a little bit further and it's mm, hard to say whether or not that's true. Although it's probably line matched, what I might be seeing is the, not the opposite page, but this page. One might think then that the paper is thin, however, in comparison to other uh, NRSV and uh, Crossway journaling Bibles that I have seen, I don't have any copies, but I was a bookstore yesterday and I've seen them over the years. This is a really thick Bible. Um, again, I didn't measure it, but if I were going to guess, it's about two inches. That's a pretty thick Bible. The other journaling Bibles are maybe two thirds this thick or less. And it's not entirely an issue of the Apocrypha being in it. Um, it's not like there's extra content per se. Here we go with a uh, poetry section. So for example, let's get the uh, Artisan Collection Bible up here. Again, same text block for the most part. As you can see, they're roughly at the same thickness. So the, the added content of the Apocrypha isn't really accounting for the thickness in this. The, the paper is actually quite thick. All right, let's get back into here again. Now it's a journaling Bible, so we have these nice wide margins and they are ruled. Uh, so there are some lines, the lines are faint they are not as bold as the text. They are dotted to make them even less prominent. Generally speaking, these margins in journaling Bibles have been about two inches wide. 
Um, that's been pretty much the standard width for the last 10 years or so that these, uh, this style has been produced. Um, now what I will say about this though is I am more accustomed to having more lines to work with there, there's a lot of space here. The, the width between each line is about the width of a pen or a pencil. Um, so if all you're doing is note-taking, you're not getting very many lines to write notes with. And I'll show an example of my uh, note-taking in a couple of moments. I do like how well along the edge, the perimeter, they did pay attention to detail and things fall nicely and neatly. The visual presentation is nice. Um, that said, humans made the Bible and as such, uh, there was a minor defect when mine arrived. This, this corner was uh, folded in and obviously that was the case during manufacturing so it was not properly trimmed. It's a minor thing. I'm not uh, a perfectionist in this regard, especially when it comes to a journaling Bible that I would be spending a lot of time beating up on and writing in. So that's not a concern. All right, let me uh, take you to a spot where I actually have some writing in it. So again, this is a journaling Bible, so... Um, its purpose is to be written in. Its uh, purpose is for the individual to read and reflect and write notes, write their questions, write their reactions, write what they think, write prayers, write whatever you want. And we all know that the, the journaling Bible craze as such has actually been more of an art craze. So a lot of people won't necessarily use these ruled lines for writing so much as using that whole extra space for art. Um, I'm not a great artist, <laughs> but I do like using these notes. Uh, so for the last two weeks since I've had this, uh, particularly during the Word Bible, I've been using it for Bible study uh, for a class that I lead at church. And in that regard, uh, you know, the time I spend in preparation, I'll write down some thoughts or notes or reflections, uh, various things like that. As you can see, this is f uh, for the reading coming up tomorrow, uh, the first Sunday of Lent, where I had written down a couple of comments, underlined a few things. Now, uh, what kind of pens work best on this? I will admit I am a uh, snob when it comes to writing in a Bible. I don't like to do it very often. I used to do it a lot more. Um, but I haven't used a journaling Bible for uh, several years, so I've kind of gotten out of the habit. But when I was doing that on a regular basis, I did find that I did prefer these Pigma Micron pens. Uh, sorry, don't mean to advertise for them. I go for that 005 size, the, the finest tip that they have, so I can get a very, very small writing in here. I'll put, uh, two lines of text for every one ruled line that's on here. Um, regular pens, you know, your, your ballpoint pens and things like that, uh, the, your writing style may vary, but I just find I can't get a nice small type, nor can I get lines that are as neat when I'm using ballpoint. Um, when it comes to the Pigma Micron, one of their selling points is as a pigment, not an ink, it's less likely to bleed through the page. Uh, bleed through is different from ghosting. Yes, I can see a ghost of the writing from one side of the paper to the other, but the pigment did not bleed through it. It didn't actually go through the paper. Um, I don't have an example of ballpoint pen ink in this particular Bible to show I actually do rather enjoy this, um, and then I can come back during Bible study and maybe mark a few things in there that other people say, or afterwards I can 
uh, add in a few more comments for anything that I learned from other people attending the class. I like to date these so that in the future I can come back and read it. And I'm the kind of person who really wants to see how my understanding changes over time. So in older journaling Bibles, I may have a couple of years worth of notes dated. And there's a real difference in understanding. I kind of appreciate that. Use whatever method you find works best for you. All right. Now, as a comparison, uh, I would like to show an older journaling Bible. This is the uh, Zondervan one, published in 2020, along with the, uh, the Artisan Collection one. But I also have one of the original journaling Bibles out there from 2009. Um, that was actually made by Oxford. I've got two of them. Uh, one is uh, still pristine and new and I have not used yet, but I'll use it for purposes of uh, comparing. Um, I have another one that I had rebound and this one I've actually put a lot more, uh, well, I've done more things in it. As you can see with John, I got a little bit more involved. Anyway, so when Oxford made their journaling Bible, uh, the paper was whiter. You can see it was still, uh, as a hardcover, the corners were not rounded. The font they used uh, back in 2009 when Oxford did this was clearly smaller. I'd say it's about an eight point, maybe even less. With much closer spaced lines. Um, and those lines are also dotted. When Oxford did this, each line of, uh, or each ruled line appears to line up or match a line of text. So if you put a note next to a line or a verse, you pretty much could write directly next to that verse. Um, I'm going to try to do a comparison then of the different thicknesses of the lines between John Duran and Oxford, just to kind of give people an idea. See if I can manage this. So obviously here are these very narrow lines versus much wider lines. So if you're using that Pigma Micron pen, obviously these very fine lines with the uh, uh, would work well when you have a very small nib. That's if you're writing. If, if you're reflecting or being more artistic, I don't think you necessarily need the lines to match up verse by verse on the paper. Um, I don't think it's as important when you're going to be artistic about it. This just mostly demarcates the uh, spot that your you know, writing's gonna go rather than dictate to you how much writing you're going to do. So one last point I'd like to make about these uh, new journaling Bibles from uh, in the NRSV from Zondervan. Um, again, here's one without the Apocrypha, the Artisan Collection, and uh, one with. Uh, I just wanna point out some of the features, and actually they are uh, sparse on features, which is fine. This is a journaling Bible, not a study Bible or a devotional one. As I pointed out earlier, there is a page for writing your name. Maybe you put your address and phone number in case you lose your book. We've got the front page. We have our uh, publication information. So as I said, they use the same text block. It's the Journal of the Word Bible. It's the text block that's used in this uh, uh, artisan collection. Do, 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 do. First printed, 2020. Table of contents. Books in alphabetical order. The uh, To the Reader, which is 
Just comments from uh, Bruce Metzger on behalf of the translation committee. A couple pages, and then we dive right into the Old Testament. There are these uh, lines underneath the uh, title. Not normally someone who appreciates that, but at least in this case, they're tasteful. It's not lines all over the page or borders or things like that everywhere. That gets distracting. Um, the line repeats itself at the bottom when it's uh, looking at the uh, footnotes or translator notes. Um, it was interesting. I, I don't have an example that I can immediately point out, but when I was first going through these Bibles and I noticed, okay, so it's using the comfort print, uh, but it's the updated comfort print for the NRSV, which means uh, the fancy or funky, depending on your point of view, G is not present in the text. This uses their new G. That did cause a little bit of controversy amongst uh, some fans of the NRSV. Zondervan was quick to take note of that and uh, changed it. So it looks a little bit more uh, traditional rather than fancy. Uh, personally, I appreciate that. However, in some of the footnotes I had noticed, and I don't have an example here, of where the footnotes contained the old G. I don't think that's such a big deal. It doesn't really change the use of the Bible in any way, shape, or form. Just pointing that out because I was amused by uh, discovering that. All right, so getting to the back of the Bible, we have, uh, well, here we are at Revelation. Oh, real quick, just to kind of say, yes, it's supposed to lie flat, and here we are near the end of the Bible, and it's staying relatively flat. I haven't used this one much, so I'm sure I could break it in even more. And so here we are at the end of Revelation. And it's still lying relatively flat. A neat feature are uh, several pages of notes at the end, or note paper. It's ruled the same kind of line as the margin lines, just as wide, also dotted. The word notes at the top. There are... Uh, in this particular copy, there's just three or four pages. Um, I was struck by the uh, journaling the Word Bible uh, in uh, a soft, you know, the, the, the leather soft, and it had far more pages of notes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you want these blank, Pages of notes, maybe the Journal of the Word Bible is more to your style. Um, but no, no other features, it's just a couple pages of notes. And then we get to this um, little blurb about the typeface, and the, the comfort print uh, unique to the NRSV. And then that's it. So it has a very uh, specific and narrow purpose, and it sticks to it. I think it does the job pretty well. Um, I actually rather appreciate the fact that Zondervan has finally come out with a journaling Bible in the NRSV translation. I know that recently they've really kind of uh, dove into this translation and are pushing it much uh, more assertively than they have in the past. And uh, I'm happy for that. It's, it happens to be my favorite translation, the one that I teach and preach from. And so I'm very much appreciative that uh, it's available again in uh, wider offerings. So there we go. That's the end of my review of the uh, Artisan Collection and Journaling the Word uh, Journaling Bibles from Zondervan in the NRSV translation. Thank you.